Number 11. Arrange each of the following sets of compounds in order of increasing boiling point temperature. And then we have F2, Cl2, and Br2. All right. So whenever we're trying to rank compounds, specifically when they say we want to rank them by boiling point, boiling points are very, very closely linked to intermolecular forces. So Instead of trying to decide what's going on with the boiling point, we could figure out what types of intermolecular forces these molecules have, and then from there we can see what's going on with the boiling point. Now, the easiest way to do this is to draw the Lewis structures out. It is one more step, but I promise if you can visualize it, um, it will make this process much more easier. Now, as you get more practice with Lewis structures, you could kind of just look at these and picture what they look like in your mind. And that's the ultimate goal. But for this video purposes, I will be drawing them out uh, just to kind of get you prepped to, you know, how to visualize them in your mind. And we'll take it from there. All right, so I have my three uh, molecules. I have F2, Cl2, and Br2. So pause the video if you need to, but for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write the Lewis structure. This will be uh, pretty much a review. There's tons of videos on this uh, channel designated to just learning how to draw a Lewis structure, so you could always check out those videos. But pause the video. See if you can come up with the same Lewis structure as what I have. So for F2, you just have two fluorines bound to each other with eight lone electrons on uh, each fluorine. Chlorine is kind of like the same thing. You just have two chlorines bound single bonded with the eight on both sides. And then bromine is basically the same. You got two bromines with a single bond like that. So they very look very, 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 very similar. Um, it's just that, that you're just replacing out one element for another. And now let's just make this more like it's supposed to be where they're supposed to be. Beautiful. This is just this is just me being particular. But if you've been on the channel by now, you most certainly know that I I uh, <laughs> need to have everything aligned. But anyway, okay. So let's find out what these intermolecular forces are. Now we're going to be going from the most general to the most specific intermolecular force. Now dipole, uh, not dipole, dispersion forces are very, very temporary forces. And just know that these are the most generalized. All compounds and all molecules have this force. It does not matter what they look like. They will all have dispersion forces. So all of these have dispersion. So dispersion, dispersion, dispersion. Easy as that. Now let's go on to the next one. Dipole-dipole attractions are only uh, seen in polar covalent molecules. So now the problem is, well, are these polar or are these nonpolar? Well, we could think of the acronym SNAP, S-N-A-P. Now the N and the P stand for nonpolar and polar. The S and the N go together, and the A and the P in the word snap go together. N, N, S means symmetrical. So maybe I'll just put symmetry or a sim, right, for symmetrical. The same. And the A stands for A, symmetrical, meaning that they don't look the same. So if we're only focusing on the polar molecules... Polar molecules means that the molecule has to be asymmetrical, in which one side does not look like the same on the other side. So let's see. F2. If I put this right down the middle, I got one fluorine on one side, one fluorine on the other. That's completely identical. That would be symmetrical. This F2 would be classified as a nonpolar molecule. And since it's nonpolar, unfortunately, it doesn't have dipole-dipole. 
Looking at Cl2, it's the same idea. I split it right down the middle. I got a chlorine on the left and a chlorine on the right. That's completely symmetrical. So this would be non-polar. Symmetrical goes with non-polar. No dipole-dipole attraction. And then I come over to Br2, split it down the middle, bromine and bromine, they're completely identical. So this is all non-polar. So none of these have dipole-dipole attractions. Let's move on to hydrogen bonding. Well, hydrogen bonding is for only molecules that have an HN, an HO, or an H bond, HF bond. But in all these examples, there's no hydrogen. So how can you have a hydrogen bond without any hydrogen to begin with? So in these cases, we're just dealing with just dispersion forces. Now, generally speaking, the more intermolecular forces that you pick up, the higher the boiling point. So especially if you're coming down and picking up a hydrogen bond, you have a way higher boiling point. But these have all the same boiling uh, intermolecular force, and it's only because of dispersion. So how are we going to be able to determine that? Well, just know that by dispersion forces, and you want to still know about increasing boiling point, the higher the boiling point means the higher molecular mass. So now we're going based off of weight. So generally, I would look up how much F2 would be on the periodic table and how much Cl2 would be and how much Br2 would be on the periodic table. But if I just look at, you know, just what one fluorine is on the periodic table, it's 19.00 grams per mole. Chlorine on the periodic table is 35.45 grams per mole. And bromine is 79.90 grams per mole. So if you have to just times them by two, because they all have two of these atoms, you would know that Br2, I mean, you're having the highest number times by two, this is going to be the highest number. Br2 would have the highest mass, 35.55 is in the middle, and then 19 is all the way at the end. So we are now ready to do our increasing boiling point. So all the way over here, increasing boiling point, I'm just going to put BP. And down here I have decreasing BP, boiling point. And out of these, since F2 has the lowest mass, that's going first. And F2 is, has the least boiling point. It is less than your Cl2, which is less than your Br2. And now let's just throw this, whoop, let's just throw this over here, put this in the middle. And I think we are good to go. Let's box it off. I guess we'll use green today. Look at that nice green. There we go. And there's your rank of increasing boiling point temperature. Fluorine's the least, bromine's the highest. They're all because of dispersion. You go by the molecular mass. I hope this makes sense. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. And I hope you guys have a great day out there. Keep studying hard. Good luck on your tests and quizzes. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.